right, thank you for staying in the Monday Report. Let's continue with that discussion. And Peterson, what are the irreducible minimums that you're willing to accept to avert this strike? It's coming up in the next seven days. You said it's on the 1st, not even on the 4th of April. Yeah. What are you willing to take mm. so that the strike is averted? Our demands are very basic. Yeah. There, there is nothing in that uh, st strike notice. There is no demand that is outrageous. Number one, we are just uh, asking what is obvious. Can you, can you obey the court order? Can you come to the table and we conclude the CBA? Because it's something we can actually do within this week, if they come to the table, uh, within the seven days. The other thing that we're asking, we're asking that there are people who have stagnated, they have never been promoted or redesignated for the last 10 years. We are saying within the seven days, can you give them letters of confirmation? We are saying you have had like four agreements that you are going to absorb the universal health coverage staff and all the other contracts surrounding that. You can imagine there is somebody who has been on a national TB contract since 2009. The law provides that you cannot actually um, renew a contract more than once. So actually, uh, uh, that is a contravention of law and uh, against that worker. And we are saying, can you confirm these people? And actually, they have a letter that was saying that they'll be considered for absorption into permanent and pensionable status. Um, we are talking about also the comprehensive medical insurance. As I sit here myself, I actually am not covered. I cannot afford the same services that I offer. Those are not very difficult things to ask. We are also asking that you signed an agreement in 2021. You, we say that we are going to implement it within three months. Now it's, uh, that would be almost uh, now three years. Mm. That is 10 times the duration we had given ourselves. Can we implement it right now? We are saying that the Public Service Commission, which is the body that is mandated, has given an establishment for interns and it has given job groups. And then we are seeing a SRC coming with their own abstract figures, which is actually even against the law. That is not their mandate. They are supposed to give an advisory within the structure that has been established by the PSC. And we are saying that continue paying the degree as you are doing, as per the establishment of the PSC. But also, do not discriminate against the diploma, because they were giving them 15,000. Yet, according to the Public Service Commission, had given them a job group H, which should, uh, where they should have been earning around 85,000. Um, also, so on you the... You're not going to take anything less than what you've said, basically. No, so basically it's, what it's I'm saying... What all I'm, or nothing at all. What I'm saying, Trevor, yeah. is that the issues that we have placed on the table yeah. are issues that we have been negotiating for uh, I think for the last around six years, okay. we have tried diplomacy. We have been promised. We have signed agreements. Yeah. And what we are saying is that now we want action. Okay. Uh, there are people whose livelihoods are being threatened okay. by the inaction by the government. All right. And so we are saying that we, we have given uh, 21 days. Okay. We are still giving seven days. Yeah. And these are issues we can resolve within, within, within this week. But let me okay. also say... Yeah that if we don't resolve by Monday, mm. once we go out, we are not going to come back without fulfilling and ensuring that there is a solution to all of them. Okay. Yes. Let me bring in Matende Chero on this. Matende Chero, you've been on the un in the union side before. Now you're in government side. Do you feel their pain? And what do you suggest as the way forward? Yeah, sure. I, I understand. I understand uh, where the, the, the you know the, the, the union uh, the union leaders and the members are coming from. I, I fully understand. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to say is that uh, you know, even if you ask me, we can still do much more. If you go to countries like Australia, the interns there and almost four times what we are paying our interns, you know? So we can still even do much more as we, as we improve, you know, the, our circumstances. But if you go to Tanzania, the interns there earn about a fifth 
of what we are paying our interns here. So you know, it is something that is very dicey. And there are quite a number so of uh, what priorities. used to put this just, just a <laughs> just a what, did, what did he, what did he <laughs> just, just a minute. Just, <laughs> just a minute. Just, 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 just a minute. Just, just a minute. Let, let it go. <laughs> the problem now, WG has uh, thrown my, my, my trail of thought <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah. But it is something that uh, we really need to be discussing in a, in a, in a nice, quiet environment, not when patients are, you know, doctors are out on the streets. It, it really hurts to see, to see doctors out there, you know, uh, out in the streets and so on. In fact, even Davji here was, uh, was hit by a tear gas canister on the head. Oh, That's why he has a cape. If you send somebody to I was to very worried <laughs> that, uh, you know, when I heard it, I heard that he had been shot in the head. I, I, I was very worried. So we don't want to expose our doctors to that kind of thing. We want to discuss in a nice, quiet environment. And doctors actually contribute a lot even to our economy. So we would like that to happen. Remember, we have just about 10 to 12,000 doctors. We need almost 50,000 doctors. So that is one of the things that we are really trying to do so that slowly by slowly we can be able to have enough so there are a lot of competing interests. Okay. Let us put them all together. Last year, we actually sat with uh, Davji and his team and even uh, Washira and others in uh, Kericho. And we signed a pact saying, <laughs> as we deal with some of these issues, let us hold on the HRH issue for one year. Then once we have now provided, because you know, even if you pay the doctors and they don't have equipment, they don't have medicines in the hospitals, then we can now come and sort out the issues around HRH. But they now they have become impatient. But you yeah. see, they have, they're not uh, waiting to the you know, end. And, see, and it was uh, a plan that yeah. was rolling out. Yeah. 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 Now, let, 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 me, say, let me say this, eh, yeah. Trevor. Instead of going into a lot of things, eh, yeah. me, I just want to really passionately appeal to my colleagues, Dr. Davji and my friend, uh, Peterson. He, he actually, Peterson, I'm even the one who held his hand yeah. as they were coming but into Union. <coughs> Please. Dr. You know, Davji, you wait, 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 all of, wait. all of, you know, this is an you appeal to you. You don't so you appeal to respond. people by, wait, of, by, by, by rhetoric. Davji, wait, 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 wait. And Peterson, don't go on strike. Come, you know that even the other day we were sitting with your people Trevor, the night. Just, let him finish. Let's discuss this. <laughs> no, but I think if you are sitting there now, let us discuss this. I have demonstrated here. Yeah, let us discuss I have this. demonstrated us, the no, extent we have gone to to try and uh, wait, show our good. Let him finish Peter his appeal. Okay. Let us sit on the table. Yeah. Let us discuss these things. In fact, yours is very easy. We have come a very long way. Let us not drop it at this point. Let us go work on it so that we can be able to deliver to our Kenyans. Okay. And Dr. Davji, do whatever you can. Please, Trevor, Davidge. all of this. You know, there is this Thank saying you. that yes. says that the shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. In the Ministry of Health, we have so many people who have the shallow understanding of the issues there, and that's why they will be appealing to us and they know very well that we need about 50,000 doctors in the country. They have not posted interns for two years. They have not employed eight doctors for the last seven years. We have 4,000 unemployed doctors, which is part of our demands here, that we want the government to plan on how to employ 10,000 doctors yeah, in 10 that's years. What that's what we are talking about in this particular strike. That's what because they're talking about universal health care. I know what that means. With the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, bottom-up approach, it means that every level two hospital, every level three, should have at least two doctors. But here we go up to level four, where you have maybe one doctor or in a sub county. So for real, that, that for real UHE to work, they must implement these things. We are actually on this strike so that Kenyans who are going to the hospital and staying there for 24 hours or for 48 hours can actually go to the hospital and find services. Okay. That's why we demand for these interns to be employed. That's why we demand for for all for the for these things to be up, to be implemented. If you look at it in the wholesome, the issues that made doctors to go on strike, it is purely because the government has not taken action to their commitments. Okay. Therefore, there's nobody who can believe somebody who every day lies or commits and they don't submit to what they've committed. Yeah. They but, commit on the paper. But there are those who are willing to make, take a bit more drastic action. One of them is Governor Johnson Sakaja. In fact, this is what he had to say. And also the CS for Health, Susan Nakumicha, also said that they're working on this. Listen to this. If you're a doctor and you're interested in working in Nairobi, be in hospital. I told them that on Thursday, on Friday, I had 60% of them reporting back to work. They came back to work. Monday, ni mandika barua ya wale 40%, watuambe kama wanataka kazi. Kama wataki, kuna wengi wanataka kazi ya kwa doctor. And this morning, on my way here, I noticed several queues at Ministry of Health. The clinical officer interns are picking their letters. 
and we are going to ensure that all other cadres pick their letters so that he can lay interns to Malaysia and I for once and for all. But I want to take this opportunity to thank the healthcare workers who have continued to offer services to Kenyans, even as we seek a lasting solution to this perennial problems. Actually, Trevor, yeah. Governor Sakaja and uh, the Cabinet Secretary have no moral authority to actually even question our strike. I stand with them an agreement, a matrix on 4th of January 2023, where they gave timelines where these things will be implemented. For example, the basic salary was to be paid by March. The new CBA was to be ready by April. The interns were to be posted every January and, and June. We sign a matrix with them. They know that they, they have gone against it. And that's why they're giving all these funny threats. But I must tell you that every employee, every worker in this country, according to Article 41 of the Constitution, has a right to go for industrial action. And this... Governor uh, Sakaja says he will replace the 40%. I mean, it's not the first time you're getting this particular threat. I must tell you that uh, the one, Governor Deritu Murevi in Laikipia one day fired doctors, but he went. You know, these governors are the passing waves. The civil servants live to build the country. And therefore, if you come and deny, deny them the rights, then you will come and go. These governors come and go, the politicians. I'm telling you, even during our 100 day strike on day 37, almost every doctor in the country was fired. But if you know that you, what you're fighting for is right for Kenyans, you must be ready to lose everything to gain the dignity that you deserve. Okay. The doctors in Kenya right now, based on the way they've been treated with governors like Sakaja or like these other governors that we've seen, they got nothing to lose, actually, in this particular strike. Okay. They are, whatever they're losing is the chains that have bound them into this particular difficult environment of working. Okay, Washira, we're running out of time here, but the CS Nakubicha <laughs> says that when she was coming out, she saw queue mm. of clinical officers taking their letters to mm. be posted. Yes. Something is being done, right? You cannot say something is being done by posting the clinical officer interns. And by the way, we have no problem with the posting. But can you pay them according to the structure that has been established by the body with the mandate? But last, let, me, let me say, Trevor, why we don't have goodwill. Uh, the chair of the Council of Governors today uh, her Excellency Waigoro uh, fired health workers from her county. The Public Service Commission directed that they be reinstated. She has declined. And she has not even allowed those she has employed on um, some very irregular contracts uh, to, to join the unions. They actually are intimidated. Uh, we have been trying to engage this government for the longest, giving us a lot of agreements, a lot of promises. The plan, the plan, if, if you read the plan, they, they documented that we were actually to uh, negotiate and conclude the CBAs within 100 days. Mm. They were to employ 20,000 uh, healthcare workers. Yeah. Um, as clinic officers, we are supposed to be around, at, I think, 29,000 by now. We are only 7,000. Um, we, have, we had given them 21 days with the issues. And you know, sometimes uh, when my brother here, my senior, because you know it's true, he actually held my hand, he's not being sincere by saying that uh, he's now trying to get us into some sort of goodwill and diplomacy. Because that is what we have been trying for the past 21 days, and they never responded. And so it has become um, compelling. Yeah. That for you to be heard and for your issues to be prioritized, then you must go on a strike. And lastly, let me say this, because yeah. the last time I was here, I made an appeal to the president. We also did a letter yeah. to the president as the unions yeah. and requested the president, and we told him, there is a problem in the health sector. Can you please put in place a presidential task force like you did in security, yeah. in the uh, education sector, so that we can have a team of experts who are going to sit, look into the issues, and recommend okay. what we need to do, whether legal or otherwise. Fair. But we never saw that coming. Okay. And so, for me, I think there is no goodwill from the government as a whole. Okay. And when we get that goodwill, then the health sector these perennial challenges that we are getting we'll are ready. going to come to an end. Okay, Matendejero, one minute, closing remark. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Trevor. I think uh, what I see here is that, uh, and from what I've heard, actually when we came in, we had a bit of time. We just sat with my brothers and we were discussing as we were waiting to come in. 
And I, I am increasingly seeing that we are talking about the same thing. If we can just be able to find a way, I'm actually available, we are available. Okay. If we can find a way of just engaging, even if it is off the negotiating table, we just discuss, we see the best way forward yeah. so that we can be able to resolve the obtaining crisis okay. as well as avert the upcoming right. crisis. I okay. think that will be a very big gift to our country. All right. Thank Davji, you. as we close, how are you doing <laughs> health-wise, first of all? Like, do you still have your cap on? No, I'm, I'm improving well. But as I say that, you know, the mission is more important sometimes. But to close, the, I will say that... Um, if I, when I hear the president speaking about the universal health care and the manifesto that he had, it's quite promising on most of the parts. And, and actually, if it is implemented, it will make health care accessible to the country. But I think the persons who probably will be letting the president down, maybe the technical persons, so some of these strikes, if they are followed up based on is manifesto on the promises that he has on this universal health care, but I think they can be implemented. And therefore, I will just ask him also that we should not go for strike for long, because sometimes when you meet, meet these individuals in the boardrooms, you realize that you give somebody your notice, the issues, and out of 19 issues, somebody has no, nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. So that prolongs the strike. Okay. And in that process, the people suffers. It's not our will, it is then the will, it is, then becomes the government in action that makes this happen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for making time, Dr. Davji Atala, Secretary General, KMPDU, Dr. Sultan Matendechero, Deputy Director, General Ministry of Health, and Peterson Washira, Kenya Union of Clinical Officers, Chairperson. I believe there's a lot of feedback coming through. Let's try and squeeze in just a few of them before we close because we've run out of time here. Let's see them. But Trevor Bidia at Citizen TV Kenya is the hashtag Monday Reporter. Goomba Steve says, let both sides be flexible for the sake of the Wanjiku. Meanwhile, the government needs to know that the doctors are not losing. It's the common Mwanainchi who cannot afford the private hospitals where the striking doctors do their work while on strike. Save us from debts, okay? Ole Carrington says the standoff between medics and government has left thousands of Kenyans without much needed public health services. Doctors need to sober up and agree to restart talks with the government to resolve the current impasse, okay? Mark Makuda says health is wealth. Health docket should be reverted back to the national government rather than being under the devolved units. It, it, is it true that Kenyan doctors are well remunerated in East and Central Africa? What then are the key underlying issues? Okay. Jane Mora says government must listen to the doctors. Their CBA must be honored. The government should not be caught off guard every year. They know exactly how many doctors graduate universities and churn out every year. Kyle Roziba says it's becoming worse to the local Mwanainchi. Surprisingly, none of the people on top are affected as they can afford private hospitals. Where will a local Mwanainchi hide? Okay. Let's squeeze in the last one here. Amos Ngongo says addressing public health system challenges related to remuneration of doctors and interns requires several strategies. One, fair compensation. Two, incentives. Three, education and training. Four, work-life balance. Five, supportive environment. Six, efficient management. And seven, stakeholders engagement. All right. Thank you all for your feedback. On behalf of everyone else who made this report a success, we say good night and God bless.